Thing radius for a number 16 bar. He's given all these, everything about rebars is measured in bar diameters. So this is, a, this turned out to be a piece of schedule 82 inch pipe, which what, which you have to bend a, uh, a 16 bar around. So we start here, we bend it around one pipe, around another pipe, another pipe, another pipe, back here, and then back in. These are what called 135 degree ends. When you read in your building codes or um, the Philippine government's put out a uh, recommended procedures for uh, RCCI, reinfor reinforced concrete with infill, the blocks of the infill, structures. And it's, uh, it deals with earthquake resistance and other things. By code, not just by that's a nice thing to do, but by code, this bar goes up and it would turn 90 degrees, would go there, but it turns another 45. So 90 and 45, that's 135. The distance from here to here is in bar diameters. For, for this number 12 bar, it comes out to be four inches. And ours are four inches to four and a half. They're all pretty close. Uh, and both sides is, uh, should be even, or reasonably even. So that's an outside column. Here we have an inside column. I've never been good at zooming. I do it in the wrong place every time. Okay, so this is another composite. Uh, you see, we wrapped the 16 or 18 bars. Every place we got them, they're, they're wrapped. Um, this would be your, your diamond bar and rectangular uh, thing. <laughs> this has no, no uh, resemblance to anything you'd find in a rectangular column. Uh, but the, but the, they're, they're drawn to, to go around, the, the stirrups are drawn to go around the rebars that they're trying to restrain. And that's what they're trying to do, is trying to keep these, these bars from bending a bow in them and popping through the outside. Uh, now, they, this column, the other column is the same thing. We didn't talk about that. It's got notches in it, square, or rectangular notches. Uh, these notches are seven and a half inches by about two and a half. And that's because the tie beams fit into them. It's like a puzzle. And there's a bunch of rebar in the ends of the tie beam. And there's rebar that was put through these, uh, the forms on these reports that went out here about two feet. And after we pulled the forms off, we bent them sort of in the direction they had to go. So it's straight across there and then bent. And that ties into all the rebar that's in the wall. Um, and of course, uh, actually those are only in the area where the tie beam is. Uh, because we did a poor concrete wall, um, we didn't bother putting uh, rebars through the column for the whole height of the wall, just where the tie beams go. And it's probably a uh, minimum of six uh, it was like uh, 10 holes, but when you go to poke them through, they run into a stirrup here, or they get over a stirrup there and you can't bend them down enough, push them from the top to force them into the hole for over here. Uh, but we got at least six in every one of them. And plus they're all sitting on, on uh, undisturbed soil. But the same, same deal here. Uh, This, this down here is the total number of bars required for uh, 10 inside columns, and it would have been the same uh, thing over there. Number of bars for the outside column. Uh, we do have some rectangular uh, tie beams. Okay, this is the, the, the bottom tie beam. Um, we didn't place this uh, standing upright. We got it laying flat like it's drawn here. It's the way it is in the ground. Um, hmm. Seven, hang on. The, the concrete is like 16, 16 tall, 24 wide, and uh, these got a little bit of extra cover on them uh, because they're buried uh, where they can uh, get dampness into the first uh, about inch and a quarter. It'll soak into concrete, you know, it's totally in, in the ground all the time. 
And these bars are all painted one one thin coat uh, before they're before we put concrete in them. Anyway, this lays flat because it's like a footer in a conventional U.S. type house, like a wooden house. You have a concrete footer uh, and a foundation underneath that all the woodworks. So this lays flat for bearing area to carry more weight. And on top of this is the floor slab. And the floor slab goes out past the house three feet. That gives you something to stand on, something to work on, and something to set your forms on if you're doing poured concrete. Also gives you something to put your scaffolds on if you're uh, doing hollow block. It's flat, so everything is, is stable and uh, uh, right where you need it to be. Uh, the upper one, uh, It goes just like it's sitting too. It's uh, um, no, that's not uh, that's not what that is. Because I know the top beams are 14 inches wide and 24 inches tall, and and that uh, you don't put seven inches of width in a 14 inch. Uh, seven in. Oh, you might seven by. But it's, it's nowhere near tall enough this way. This is uh, when you when the walls are poured. There were uh, uh, the top um, tie beam and the wall was one monolithic pour. So this the this it's got rebar in it as if it was a uh, as a, if it was actually a beam with no wall underneath of it. So all the calculations are assuming it was it was sitting in air. But the, the poor concrete wall is really holding it all up, too. Uh, this cutie up here, this is the rebar. This, like, like we just counted like 20 of them in one of these columns. This is what goes down in the ground. Uh, if this... Uh, uh, let's, wait a minute. Transform, rotate... That's what it looks like in the house. Okay? It's sticking upright. And if you, any of the pictures of the house, like in the slide shows, the bars you see sticking out of that uh, uh, lower roof slab, that's those bars. Uh, there's 21 of them, but uh, most of them are bent into the, all but six of them, or maybe eight of them, all the rest of them are bent into the, uh, the slab to tie the slabs to the columns. Uh, but what we're going to look at here is not that. We're looking down here. You got a, a, a foot here that rests on the on this big monolithic block in the ground. It's got a bend here. <clears throat> it's got the same uh, minimum bend radius <clears throat> off of the. Uh, no, it hasn't. It's, it's a, this is this is bent around a piece of uh, six-inch Schedule 40 pipe. It's an it's addition on the side of the bender. Uh, still hanging on it today, um, but it's got that big wide radius band, and here's another one up here because we wanted a a, um, a better load path coming through here than it would be if it had that tight bend on it. Um, and then, uh, uh, actually, before these things were put in the hole, there's a rectangular grid like you see on everybody else's uh, Philippine house. Um, about eight inches by eight inches, number 12 bars. Uh, and it's uh, six feet by six feet. That's five and a half feet by five and a half feet because there's cover around the ends of the bars in the concrete. And we didn't make them different sizes for different size pads because they only had to be uh, two meters square to be way up in the safety factor range. So that was tied under the bottom of this before they were tilted up. Now, to put them in, we... we uh, we physically picked these things up with like eight or ten guys, and we carried them over to the hole and dropped them in. Um, we we put a, a, a four by four across the hole, carried it, and this much would be hanging out over the hole, and it had all this uh, stuff that would, goes in the ground hanging on that end. A lot of fair fair amount of weight, about a third the weight of the column was down there. So then they just sort of picked up one end and, and walked your hands down there and flipped them up in there and drug them around. And because we had the, this, all these legs are the same height, 
and also it's uh, it gives you a uh, uh, a pretty wide base for your uh, for your column because these are fanned out all the way around uh, uh, in a rec rectangular sort of sh rectangular shape. It's not really circular; it's more rectangular. Uh, you have to see it to believe it could be, but that's what it is. Um, it gave you this wider base, and when we stood them up in there, they stayed there all by themselves. We put some uh, uh, two by threes like over a stirrup and, and wedged against something on the other side, uh, just to keep them honest. And once we got the forms up, see that all that had to go away anyhow, and they were tied to the top of the forms. And the uh, we poured concrete up. Uh, uh, I think it's only twelve inches. Could be fourteen inches, but I'm kind of thinking it was intended to be twelve. And what you do is you uh, you know, put a tie wire around uh, one of the bars with the tails hanging out and then you you put up concrete till that wire is flush with the surface anyway uh this this is this is the wires were at, tw at 12 inches and that was one more chance of getting an even starting point for the house because if if you had another half inch of this in 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 the ground but the top was at the right height set with the transit which is how we did it with the uh optical transit don't like don't like laser transits. I've got no accuracy in laser, laser transits. Uh, I've had people set up foundations for me that with, were perfect on a laser transit, but I build machinery that bolts to that concrete. It won't stand a half inch. It's uh, it's just the metal is just too stiff. You can't pull it down to it. The machinery was just built too strong for for something to be uh, unlevel. And I tell them ahead of time, I said, look, I, my transit's calibrated, and I calibrated it this morning, uh, so I know it's perfect. It's, I mean, it splits the hair at 300 feet, and uh, your, your foundation's off three inches, you know, from out in the middle out there. No, no, it's a laser transit. I said, yeah, well, you might have paid a lot for it, but it's a piece of junk. Uh, two weeks later, he's in there with a jackhammer. He had to dig that whole thing up and delayed us for about three weeks. Oh, anyway... The rest of this, uh, uh, this, this being level, that meant our forms could just be set, bolted together around it, sitting on that level surface. And um, we didn't have to do too much leveling to the, the forms. And they were so stiff, all we could do was really put wedges underneath of them here to shim them a little bit if we wanted to. Nowadays, I put that uh, insulation you, with the foil on it that you put in under roof tin. Uh, I put a piece of that around the forms and seals the concrete from coming out and it keeps everything from sticking and uh, it makes it easier to shim. You can you can pound a wedge in there and, and uh, you know and, and tilt it a little bit. It still stays sealed up. Let's see, we're gonna put that back if I can do it. Okay. Well, this video is too long, so I screwed that idea up. These are all uh, 3D. This, this is the actual concrete. Um, and here we got... Uh, this shows where the pipes need to go to make these, uh, these shapes of, uh, of uh, stirrups. So it's uh, the pipes for uh, an outside area it is by itself. The pipe, this looks like a Chrysler ornament to me for some reason. Uh, and anyway, we are bending jig makes uh, a lot more shapes than this. These are actual plates. There's five... Uh, top plates for the bending machine and so uh, this and that and this uh, if they're in uh, if they're in red they bolt on and if they're in blue they're welded to the plate um, I think in, in the actual construction which says oh wait a minute you don't have to do that we got two sides so the blue ones are welded to one side of the plate and the red ones are welded to the other side of the plate and you just flip the plate because it's symmetrical and that's what was done on, on this one, that one, and this one. And then we have a, a couple of plates that, uh, uh, oh, they make other sizes of rectangles. 
And what we just did something that had to have a bunch of odd sizes. Hmm. I don't know what we were working on. It wasn't a dirty kitchen, I don't think. Oh yeah, it was a dirty kitchen. The floor slab in the dirty kitchen has got uh, um, about this size of uh, um, stirrups and uh, uh, 10 uh, rebars each going all the way around the slab. And the guys come up with a way to, to bend these these, I, I was going to just bend the ends on them on one, on one way and the other one to interlock and having to put stirrups together inside the hole down there, you know, slide them on and then tie them. And uh, they left the, uh, the stirrups off, bent the, 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 all these different radiuses of bars, you know, ones on the in, uh, let's get closer. That doesn't make any sense. I'm pointing and it's going around in circles. Like, uh, this bar would be cl if you if the if, it, if the wall was turning that way or the the thing the concrete would turn that way, this one doesn't take much of a bend to be going that way. This one is farther out, so it's got a a farther run on the bend, but still 90. So it would go away from us uh, some, and then it would bend. This would go away from us even farther and bend. And as you get down here, this would go way over there and bend. And they did that uh, and turned the corner on these rods, and they took the stirrups and slid them in, fanned them out. I don't know if that shows in any of the uh, um, the videos or not, but these corners, uh, they come up here and, and the bars turn and they stay embedded in the concrete however long the bar was. And then th these stirrups these were standing on edge from what we're looking at. They would, it was like three of them, uh, or four, maybe four. And they would just fanned out around in a circle, carried that load path, that load path, here we are, we're on load path, carried the load path right around the corner. I didn't tell them to do that, but I sure am glad they thought it up. Uh, we'll do it again now, <laughs> once we've seen it. Um, uh, this doesn't show us anything. This is some other columns or something else. These, these are just the tie beams with the, uh, with the bars on them. I kind of thought that the... Uh, I think I, I erased them. Yeah. Because these, uh, these, these things have probably still got the, uh, the rebar inside of them. Maybe not. They're sort of in, in, when you go wireframe, everything that's inside should show up. But that's what the, uh, the shapes of the parts look like. Okay. I think we beat this to death. And the video's got to be way too dang long. Uh, I'm going to try to split this thing into two pieces. Might make it more uploadable. Right now I can't upload because uh, uh, something's happened to my YouTube. I click on the symbol for YouTube Studio and I get nothing. Just a little swirling thing on a white page. You can leave it for an hour and it never does come back. So I don't know what uh, has happened to the computer. I need to look up another computer and uh, you know, go from there.